the interdisciplinary MATA biofuels team from the University of Michigan and Yale University tasked itself with examining the potential benefits and costs of implementing a biofuels program in southeast Madagascar. Our team's first important task was to better understand Jatropha, the plant we had read so much about and that has been the focus of much interest by biofuels proponents. Our research partner, Eco-Regional Initiatives, had in recent years been experimenting with growing, harvesting, and using Jatropha seeds for oil production. So if you squeeze this, oh, yeah. um, you There's see how oil. it gets wet and oily. Yeah, that has the most oil in it. Yeah, and on Saturday we'll show you our hand presses. These Bielenberg presses are made locally and generate oil yields of roughly 18% leaving the leftover seed cake available as a potential fertilizer in an area where few agricultural inputs are available or affordable. Once the Jatropha oil has been extracted, it will then be filtered and stored for future use. Eco-regional initiatives has developed an affordable oil lamp made from recycled materials that can burn Jatropha oil for indoor lighting, thereby offsetting the need for kerosene and reducing the associated greenhouse gas emissions. An additional benefit of improving indoor air quality could be realized by replacing kerosene with Jatropha oil. Studies have documented the harmful health effects caused by exposure to indoor air pollutants from cooking and lighting sources. Our team is examining the particulate emissions from burning Jatropha oil and is comparing those to other lighting fuels commonly used in Madagascar. Recognizing that standard research survey methodologies could potentially introduce an unacceptable level of researcher bias we chose to be trained in and use rapid rural appraisal techniques, which use hands-on tools to develop a rich qualitative and quantitative database. Let's say now, okay, let's do a transect walk. Vuni, you go down that way, you see, go up that way. Within a couple of hours, you have a much greater knowledge of an area than if you had sat under a tree and done a, done a classic interview question. Okay, so that's a transit. Let me show you another very, very interesting tool. Although our team had hoped to evaluate the technical performance of a multi-platform press that included a mechanized seed press and a rice dehauling, the Jatropha press did not clear Malagasy customs in time for our field research. We did, however, examine some equipment for the multi-platform press, such as electric generators, a coffee dehauler, and a rice dehauler. In addition to recording their technical specifications, we also made a note of the brand and model of each, so that any multi-platform configuration we recommended could be made from equipment available in Madagascar. We also studied traditional methods of rice production. In fact, our research focused heavily on social factors that would determine this aspect of a biofuel program's success, including what would happen to people, especially women, who made their living dehulling rice. <laughs> Following interviews with organizations such as Conservation International, and then interviews with villagers, our team became increasingly concerned that monocropping Jatropha and or stimulating additional rice production may harm the local ecosystem, which is home to many unique and endangered species. Our team concluded that a multi-platform press that included a rice dehauler may cause social and environmental problems that a more prudent approach to implementing a biofuels program could avoid. Building on our findings that many Malagasy farmers already have some experience with Jatropha and already use polycropping strategies in their existing fields, 
we recommend implementing a biofuels program that targets local fuel needs without jeopardizing food security. This program will train farmers to grow Jatropha in their existing fields alongside staple crops such as cassava, beans, and sweet potatoes, as well as recently introduced cash crops such as chili peppers or vanilla that use Jatropha as a tutor plant. Farmers will receive Jatropha seedlings and technical training in polycropping farming techniques that can maximize the agricultural yields of all plants grown on their land. They will also receive training in the harvesting and processing of Jatropha seeds into oil. Not only could Jatropha oil produced in a polycropping scheme be used for lighting fuel and even soap, but once local expertise in a market has been sufficiently developed, additional oil could be produced for the FCE railway. The colonial built FCE railway is the lifeblood for many of the villages along the line carrying sustainably produced fruit to regional and national markets and bringing in medicines and salt to villages that have no transportation alternative. Nearly 100,000 people depend exclusively on the railway for their livelihood. And studies show its closure would encourage deforestation of nearly 375 square miles of forest as farmers cut down tree-based crops to plant rice and cassava instead. The increasing unreliability of the FCE in recent years has stimulated a shift to unsustainable food producing strategies in an understandable effort to avoid starvation. It is clear that the status quo puts these communities on an undesirable trajectory towards environmental destruction, social upheaval, and food insecurity. A biofuels program that produces enough oil for offsetting the FCE's reliance on expensive imported diesel fuel would reduce the railway's operating costs, shifting those savings to badly needed infrastructure repairs and improving the rail line's reliability for the people who depend on it. In order to ensure the long-term viability of the program's interventions, we recommend pursuing carbon credits from emission reductions stemming from fuel switching of lighting fuel and eventually diesel fuel for the FCE. A carbon credit monitoring program implemented in cooperation with local farming cooperatives called Colo Arenas would verify that local farmers do not expand their farming efforts into primary or secondary growth forests. In an area where the livelihoods of people the future of their communities and the state of the ecosystem are so visibly intertwined, our recommendations lay out a feasible, responsible path while there is still time to avert a looming disaster.